or you can set like some limits or you can get a warning if you have crossed uh, more than one GB per month and so on. So behind these screens, behind this UIs, what's working is the BPF, uh, which, I mean, it uses the C groups and uh, it uses the observability of specific interfaces, uh, mobile and uh, Wi-Fi interfaces to give these stats. Yeah. And the second thing is uh, for the profiling. So we also get uh, stats about how much uh, CPU is used, how much GPU is used, and uh, we have many uh, many tools which tells like uh, what's your performance, uh, how your FPS is uh, changing, how your uh, game is reacting, and so on. So in this space also uh, the probes and uh, test points are used. And the third and foremost thing is like uh, offloading. Uh, I think in the first session we covered a lot. So mainly uh, when you're using uh, tethering or when you're using your hotspots, so where you don't want the packet to travel up the uh, TCP IP stack, the uh, BPF, uh, both XDP and uh, TC offloads are used uh, for mainly for performance uh, impacts. Yeah, going next, eBPF and Samsung. So whatever we saw previously was in the plain or the vanilla Android flavor. So we have more uh, customization or uh, user preference solutions for Samsung uh, specific uh, smartphones as well. One of, I mean, I just listed top three things. So first is like the traffic prioritization. So this has been like a very famous case pre and uh, like during the pandemic and post pandemic. So when you're attending your online classes or when you're uh, like playing your PUBG phone, PUBG mobile, so if something is downloading at the background, you will see like the latency increases or it peaks up. And uh, when you're doing like a video call, you always pause your downloads or pause your uploads and so on. So what we use is the uh, BPF schedule classes. Uh, so we try to kind of prioritize the real time. We identify the real time traffic, first of all. And uh, we try to uh, prioritize the uh, real-time traffic or the non-real-time traffic. So yes, the BPF helped us to like work with this solution. And uh, obviously, if you have a smartphone, Samsung smartphone, and playing a PUBG phone, so you don't need to worry about the downloads in the background. And the second thing is the uh, enhanced mobile hotspot. Uh, I'll be talking about this in detail, how we are using. And eBPF also helped us in uh, as a tool or it also assisted few of our uh, AI models like to process the input uh, parameters more fast and uh, I mean to reduce the CPU usage and so on. So today I want to uh, talk a little bit more on the uh, Samsung mobile hotspot uh, because it touches the observability, network uh, security and few more aspects as well. So yeah, everyone here would have uh, experienced 5G or experiencing 5G. So the one thing which uh, stats say is like post 5G, the sharing has become more and the data usage also has become more. So if you have like uh, probably 1.5 GB per day plan, so uh, previously you might not have exhausted 1.5 GB or 1 GB per day, but recently once you start uh, using your 5G data, you'll see like the data sharing has been increased and the data usage also has been increased. So we thought like as the data sharing and the mobile hotspot usage uh, kind of skyrocketed post the uh, 5G and also due to the uh, pandemic. So we want to do much more uh, with the uh, enhanced mobile data, mobile hotspot. So this is the boring screen which uh, it used to be like uh, five years before. So you just have to like turn on or turn off the hotspot. That's what maximum uh, we can do with some band setting or the password changes and so on. So what eBPF helped us is like uh, we can we can monitor your mobile data rate specifically, and uh, we can also nowadays we are using per day plan, right? So it's not like per month how much uh, data pack you have. We usually have like per day we have 1.5 GB or 2 GB and so on. So we are able to monitor uh, the mobile data separately and uh, other like let's say there's some Wi-Fi sharing features also. Uh, we are able to observe this separately, and uh, yeah, we'll come one by one. So we are able to also uh, kind of introduce the BPF map and we are able to track each devices. So let's say you're connected your TV uh, to your uh, 5G mobile hotspot and you're watching Netflix. After 10 minutes, you will be surprised to see a message from your Airtel saying like your 50% or 80% of the data has been exhausted. 
So to track this, not just to track this, uh, we can also uh, kind of give little more flexibility to control this. So control part also is on the BPF. So we can set like, uh, I don't want to share more than uh, 700 MB or one GB of my data with my shared hotspot or specifically to your TV, which is the connected client. We also introduced uh, something called as the smart priority. So what it does is like, as I mentioned earlier, so there are like four clients connected. So let's say you're connected your, uh, your Zoom call to your hotspot and someone is also downloading, uh, let's say the slide from the same hotspot. So uh, we are kind of monitoring the traffic patterns. We are trying to uh, understand what kind of traffic it is. Our A engine would tell us like which is uh, real time uh, type of traffics and which is not real time. And uh, we set like different uh, priorities for each. And we also introduced this one time password mode. So let's say someone whom you really don't like has visited your home. You don't want to share your actual mobile password. So in that case, you can just give a one-time password and uh, which would be valid for 24 hours. In this, uh, we also want to add a little bit of security to that. So uh, as I mentioned, so we have like much more flexibility for uh, monitoring per device and controlling per device. And uh, one of the feature where we are using, uh, we are monitoring at the TCP layer or something is like the passing of the internet. So usually, uh, I mean, there have been multiple methods where you disconnect the uh, device and they ask to connect back and so on. So if you want to quickly pass a specific uh, user, so there is a pass, pass sharing feature. So what it does is, uh, it allows only the control messages or the L2, L3 packets uh, to go on, but it kind of uh, drops the TCP data packets. So this is one of the feature and also we add the time and data limit. So as I said, uh, we had the uh, one-time password also. So how it works is like, uh, I mean, I just touch upon this. So basically we have our ingress and uh, egress uh, TC hook. So we try to attach uh, our eBPF programs in the soft APs, uh, soft APs uh, SW LAN. So soft AP will be enabled whenever your uh, hotspot is on. So once uh, this ingress and uh, egress, uh, we are able to attach our program. So we try to monitor, we try to see whether there's a specific uh, data limit set. So we have a eBPF map. So whatever the actions is set uh, in the uh, UI. So that's being updated to the users, I mean, to the uh, eBPF maps. And uh, eBPF map, in, I mean, the eBPF program will in turn like uh, update the program stats and also try to see like if it has uh, reached the limit or not. So for, uh, as I mentioned, for the uh, pass setting, uh, we have kind of play around with the TCP headers and uh, a little more with the UDP headers as well. And uh, for the one-time password, I mean, uh, so we have like two different networks. So one is the regular network, so where your uh, normal users or, or, or the regular uh, password users are connected. So let's say I'm connected my uh, smart TV and my laptop in my regular uh, MHS. And let's say your friend comes home and uh, he has connected via one-time password network. So we are able to ensure like the OTP network does not uh, access the regular network. So your friend will not override your uh, screen sharing or your uh, smart TV. So this kind of uh, network specific functionality is also, also enabled with the uh, eBPF. So yeah, this is the uh, scheduling part of the eBPF. So the legacy uh, MHS, the packet used to come together. I mean, we don't have a separate lane or a priority lane uh, for a specific kind of uh, traffic. So we uh, we play around with the uh, uh, schedule class and uh, we uh, we try to classify, yes. Yes. Land, right? yes. This is something that you, this SW land that you're trying to do, right? No. When you are doing that on the smartphone itself, right, that's going to lead into more power consumption on the phone itself. Yes. Why would that be a feature that you would like to sell as such, rather than something which a user would want to do at home by differentiating different WLAN IDs or something like that? Why would you put that on the phone in, in the first place? Uh, basically, this is specific to the mobile hotspot feature. When a specific uh, user has turned on his mobile hotspot, so post which we have two different profiles. 
uh, I, I didn't get your exact question. My yeah. point is this, that you are, you're saying that you're bifurcating it from an OTP network versus a regular network. Inside the hotspot. Inside the hotspot, that's fine, that's not a problem. But the thing is that you are, again, sort of differentiating, sort of, you're sort of bifurcating it into two parts, yes. right? Yes. That leads to more power consumption on the phone. Why not sort of do that something on the network itself where somebody is going to latch onto? Keep aside the hotspot. The use case which I'm trying to sort of look at is, yes. why would you want to do that on the smartphone as such? Because that's going to be resource intensive on the phone itself. The main reason why is like, uh, we have the control on the hotspot. Okay. So let's say you're connected your uh, MacBook to the Samsung hotspot, so we cannot do the control on the uh, MacBook, right? So we want to do in the host itself, the host being the uh, Samsung device. Yeah, that's it, that's why. So, so yeah, uh, so with schedule class, we are able to uh, prioritize the traffic and uh, 